We're going to continue taking a look at some of the properties of numbers and some of the core ideas that we're going to need as we move into college algebra, algebra 2. And so as we do that, let's get started. Now, there's a lot of properties here. If you're going to be a math person, engineering, maybe calculus kind of student, then you should probably be familiar with the names. It isn't all that important, though, if you're not, just to understand what's happening here. But let me take you through them real quick. The commutative property is the idea that it doesn't matter which way you drive to and from work, which way you, you, you do the commute, the length of the commute is still the same. So if you add A and B or you add B plus A, it doesn't matter. You still drove the same distance. Well, it's the same for multiplication. You can multiply A times B or B times A, you get the same thing. Now the associative property is the idea that if it's just addition, it doesn't matter who you associate with first, whether you associate the A and B or the B and C, you have your choice because it's it, it, whatever's most convenient for you to group them that way. And the same is true with multiplication. Two times three times four, you could do those in any order you want, you're gonna get the same number. Now I'm sure you're familiar with the distributive property if you've had alg algebra one. If you have three, times x plus 2, you got to give the 3, you multiply the 3, you distribute him to multiply times everything on the inside. So that's what they're doing here, they're distributing by multiplying by b and then multiplying by c. Okay, the identity property is this, what, what can you do, add to a number to keep it the same? Well you can keep it the same by adding a 0, and for multiplication you can multiply by 1, the inverse property is what can we do to make a number turn into zero, at least in addition. If I uh, add a number to its opposite, I get zero. Now in multiplication it's a little different, and it, the inverse property refers to if I do A times that same thing as the reciprocal of that same number, I always get one. So my inverse property in addition is the inverse, the opposite, gets me zero in addition. But if I make a true inverse in multiplication, so one over that number, you make it's called the reciprocal. I multiply those, I always get one. Okay, now um, it isn't they're gonna mention all the properties, and I don't uh, particularly want to do that to you. I'm gonna just talk through what the advantage of them would be. So if you look at A here. What they're doing is they're showing this really was the distributive property. We could take out a greatest common factor. That's the reverse of the distributive property. I took out a GCF of 3, and I would create 3 times 6 plus 4. Now, I don't know that this one was actually any faster, like it really benefited us at all, but so they've basically done their distributive property in reverse. I've pulled out a GCF. Okay, now they've done the parentheses, multiplied it down, I got a 30. Now here in the second, what have they done here? So what they've done is they've changed who they were associating. So instead of doing the five and eight first and then taking away eight, because these are opposites, I have the additive inverse property here. Eight and negative eight are opposites of each other. So if I added them, if I associated them first, I would create zero and then the problem would be much easier to see. Okay, now as we look at C here, um, I don't really, oh, they're doing this true. Okay, I wasn't really sure what they were doing here. And I actually don't think this one is better. Yeah, they are distributing a negative sign through here. So that's important, like if you had x plus 2. I'm distributing that negative, and it would become negative x minus 2. Now, in this case, doing that at the front end here is actually just making that harder. So I, I'm not sure I agree with that. So what I would have done here is just... 6 minus, we're going to do our grouping symbol. Now, that's like a minus, like you're multiplying by a negative, so it's just like 6 minus 24. That's all that happens there, and you get the negative 18 that way. I don't think that's helpful. Okay, and the next one, they're changing the, the order that they multiply. They're using, they're going to associate some different numbers here. So instead of multiplying the two that they have, they're going to switch it so that they multiply these. Now why would that be helpful? Those are inverses of each other, which means they're going to multiply down to just be 1. And so that because they're 1, 1 times 2 thirds is 2 thirds. So again, the properties are, oh, well, we've got one more here. What is this one? Okay. Well, this one is a pure distributive property. Like So you could have done everything inside of here first, 
and it would still work. It wouldn't be that terribly hard. But here, if I've got 100 outside there, I can distribute it to both of those guys. Okay, I distribute it. And now what I've got is I've taken away the decimals, which will make putting these together much easier. So again, it isn't super important. Like I've seen tests where you have to know every single property name. Um, that isn't what I would do. If you're going on to be a math major or whatever, or again, a calculus person, knowing all the property names could be valuable. But I just want you to see the, the intrinsic value of changing the grouping or whatever we've got. So let's like take a look at the first one here. I've got three things being multiplied together. Well, if I change the order there, if I multiplied these guys first, because they're inverses of each other, they're going to become 1. And so then I've got 1 times 11, which is, of course, 11. Now, this was intended to be the distributive property here, where 5 would go there, and then 5 would go there, and you'd add up the answer. I, I don't think that's particularly helpful here. It's helpful when there's an I don't know, but in this context, although it's true, it isn't all that helpful. So you would just do 5 times 6.6, .6, I think, would be much easier. Okay. Yeah, now there's trying to do the distributive property again here, but again, I think just doing the order of operations would be easier, but they're trying to show you that you could make this 18 minus 7 plus 15 by sending that negative to both of them that follow. Again, I'm, I'm not really sure that is faster. I would have just tidied it up and then had two negatives in a row make a positive. Now here, I've got additive inverses of each other, so if I associate these differently and do 7 eighteenths and negative 17 eighteenths, those make 0 and would drop out, and I could then do 4 ninths. So I saw the inverses, I saw the associative property, and I just changed around the order I did that. Now here, I think what they're, this is easy to solve, but I think what they're hinting at here is that if I did the distributive property, so I'm really reverse distributing. I don't like it to be called the distributive like this. You're really just pulling out a GCF here, but that's what they're talking about is that distributive concept, but we're, we're undoing it by pulling out a GCF of 6. Now inside of there, I have a 0, so this turned out to be 6 times 0 or 0. So I was using those principles, but I'm not really set on you needing to memorize all the names. All right, now this may seem pretty easy to you, but make sure you've got these terms down. We need to understand what's a constant and what's a variable. And so as we go through here, we've got a little table set up. The numbers are my constants. The variables are those idle nodes that could keep changing. We could change the value for x. It could be 1, it could be 2, it could be anything we wanted. So I'm just indicating what are the numbers, the real numbers, the constants, and what are the variables. Now be careful here. Pi is not a variable. It's not changing. It's 3.14 or whatever. So that's a number. So I've got two constants here. And then here's my constants and my variables. So same thing. I'm not going to set up the chart, but you've got 2 and pi are constants here. And then r and h then are variables. You've got 2 as a constant here. l and w are variables. I've got 4 as a constant, and then y as a variable. All right, now I, I see students will struggle with this from time to time. We need to evaluate an expression. Now I can't, I can't find, I'm not solving for x. This is not, how, what is the value of x that makes this true? I have an expression, which means there's no equal sign in this in and of itself. So we're not doing pure algebra here where we're solving for x. What this is saying is I want you to sub in a particular value for x and tell me what you get. And let's see if they did it, yeah. Now when I sub in, I always sub in by putting in parentheses. So I'm replacing x with a zero because they're telling me that's what it is. So I'm pulling the x out and replacing a zero. And when I do that substitution, I'm going to drop in a parenthesis. So I understand it's subbed in. And it's because I want to make sure I don't miss any multiplication. Because if you don't, you may miss that. So parentheses is really important. So I multiply that out 2 times 0, get down to negative 7. Okay, now they're telling me to do it again. I'm pulling out the x, dropping in a 1, put it in parentheses because this tells me it's multiplication. Got a couple more, pulling out the x, subbing in the 1 half, tidy this up. Again, one more time for negative 4. Drop it in parentheses. 
Okay. So you can pause if you want to try it on your own. I imagine you probably feel pretty comfortable with this. Pulling out a Y, putting in a 2. So I've got 11 minus 6. I've got 5. Okay, I'm pulling out a Y, putting in a 0. So 3 times 0 is going to go. I'm going to get just 11. Subbing in a 2 thirds in place of the Y. Now the 3's would cancel. Now do you see this is 11 minus 2 now? So I get 9. Now subbing this in. Now this one you got to be careful. Now a negative and subtraction really don't do anything differently. I'm going to treat this like negative 3 times negative 5. That's positive 15. And now because there are two different groups here, like this was subtraction, I'm going to show that it's positive 15 as if it's an addition problem. So, so again, the 3 owns that sign and the 5 owns that sign. So I would get positive 15. Now because we were originally adding or subtracting, I'm going to show that that positive, I'm going to show it as an addition sign. I'll put that together, I get 26. All right, we've got some more complicated expressions here, at least some of them. This one's not. But the same idea. We're just subbing in. Make sure you put your parentheses. Subbing in this time for t. We just had to do it in two locations. Remember, there's like the group on the bottom. You've got to tidy all that up by the order of operations. Now, I'm subbing 5 in for r. Now, I have to cube it now. Follow the order of operations. Now, I do 4 thirds times 125. Just tack that pi on the end. Okay, now this one they've given us, we're evaluating it. We're subbing in an A and a B. So I've got two groups of parentheses. All the A's become 11's. All the B's become negative 8's. Now just be careful of this here. So positive 11 and negative 8 is negative 88. But because it had been addition or subtraction, I'm going to show that negative like it's a subtraction sign. Remember, we don't want two signs in a row. So a positive and a negative become a negative, which is the same as subtraction. So I can tidy that up now, get negative 85. I've got M and N. I've got values for that. I'm going to sub them in. Okay, clean that up. I've got the square root of 144. I've got 12. Okay, evaluating this for 5, so I'm going to sub in here. Again, pause the video if you want to try this without seeing my work. So I'm doing tidying up the top and tidying up the bottom. It's like a grouping symbol. So I get that. Okay, subbing in for t here. Now it's negative 2 and negative 2 is how it functions. It makes positive 4, but because it was subtraction, addition or subtraction, I'm going to list that now as adding 4. Get 11. Okay, subbing in, so I put a parenthesis, so I've got one-third pi times 121. So I don't think that simplifies. I'll just make that 121 over 3. Okay, now I'm subbing in here. Be careful in this one. Watch what we're doing here. I'm going to put parentheses on all of these so I make sure I don't miss anything. And so why this is important here is it's not just 2 that's being squared with the negative out front. It's negative 2 that's being squared. And so I've got several grouping symbols and several exponents. I've got to work my way from the inside out. So this is 4 times 3 now. And my answer will be cubed. So now finishing up inside there, I've got 12 to the third. And I have no idea what that is. So I'm going to do that on my calculator. It's 17, 28. Okay, one more here. Four. I've got two thirds. Okay. Now, I do always sub in here. So I was, knowing it just from doing so many, I knew that the parentheses were not going to matter on these, so I tried, I almost didn't do it here. But So we don't need these here. They're not going to impact anything. I just, from practice, know that that's not going to change anything. So I could get rid of them at this point 
because I know I don't have to multiply them by something, at least inside of here. So I do want to show them because there are times it does impact things, but I just know kind of that this is not. I'm, I'm not immediately multiplying by anything. I have to subtract these first, so I actually don't want to see them. But I did sub in. Okay, so now we've got to work inside those grouping symbols. So they have a common denominator. That would make one-third. If you need a refresher on fractions, I've got videos on that. I can help you with that too. So these have a common denominator, so you can multiply them get negative one-third. Okay, now this is multiplication now. So again, I hope you remember how the fractions work, but if you need a refresher, just check out these older videos. So this is like a negative five times a negative one-third. That makes positive five-thirds. Two negatives make a positive. And because it had been addition or subtraction, I'm going to show that positive as a plus. This becomes 9 over 3, which simplifies down to 3. All right, I think there's not much else here other than use, learning how to work with formulas, which you, I'm sure you already know. You've done it before, but just as a reminder. Um, so this is just telling us that we have our r equals 6 and height equals 9. And they're just asking us to sub in. So the surface area formula here is kind of complicated, but we're subbing in those variables that we know. So they've subbed in everywhere. I like how they did that. They showed the parentheses. Now they clean that up. This would be done first. Now we've got a string of multiplication, and we've got it. Okay, so they're leaving one to us, and they're telling us that L is 32, and width is 24. So we have a rather complicated formula here, but they've given us the formula, so we're just doing... I sh should have shown all of them. Again, I knew they weren't going to impact anything, but we should show them. Okay, so I didn't really need, I w wasn't going to have any multiplication or exponents that was going to change anything, so I didn't need to show my subbed in um, parentheses, but okay, so we're going to do inside those grouping symbols first. I'm going to go ahead and do this one just to save time, so that is 40, and I'm going to drop that grouping symbol because I know there's no multiplication. So what I've got now is 48 times 40 minus 32. And then what is this? Square or centimeters squared. Okay, now I, I think this is our final idea for this uh, video. We have to remember how to combine like terms. Do you remember this? So something like this, all the variables make the team name. And the name of the team may be very similar, but it has to be exactly the same. So the variables are the name of the team. So I've got two guys on the MN team here and three on it here. That is exactly the same. So I can put that together. I've got five guys on that team. Now, there's no one else on the M team, so they cannot combine. So that's the best I can do. Now, going back to this one, I've got X's and Y's, and then some constants. They're not on any team whatsoever. Just be careful of the signs in front. So I've got three X's here and, and one X there. I've got four X's. I've got minus 2Y and minus 3Y. That's the same team, minus 5Y, and the 7 doesn't have anywhere to go. Okay, now I'm going to tidy this up before I combine like terms. I've got a distributive property here, and the 5 owns that negative sign, so it's going to make negative 15. And then negative 5 times negative r is plus 5r, and then there's a 4 on the end. Now I've got some cleaning to do. I've got some like terms. I've got 5r's and 2r's. I've got 7r's. I've got minus 15 and plus 4, minus 11. Those are the same kinds of things, and they can be combined. Okay, now I left this last one. I've got some T's and S's, but I've got these fractions. So, And this is going to make this the distributive property. I'm sending a negative through there. So I'm going to do 4T minus 5 fourths S. Now it's minus 2 thirds T and minus 2S. 
Okay, now we've got some work with fractions. I'm going to just put them next to each other so it makes some more sense. I don't like when they use T's because they look like addition. Okay, I just grouped them together. I'm allowed to do that as long as I don't mess up those signs in front of them. Okay, so I'm going to turn this into 12 over 3t minus 2 thirds t. Just got a common denominator, made that 4 over 1, made them both over 3. So if you don't understand that, go back to my old stuff. And then I'm going to make this 8 over 4s. So they have a common denominator. Okay, now I've got t's. They're both t's. i got 12 thirds of them here, minus 2 thirds of them there. That's going to get me 10 thirds t. Now here I've got a common denominator. I've got negative 13 fourths s. Now again, I, I would totally understand if this didn't make a lot of sense. I went quickly through that, but go back and check out some of my stuff on fractions if you need a hand there. Okay. Uh, let me see. Is this our... Oh, we got... Okay. A little bit more after this. So Now... Before I can combine like terms, I'm going to distribute this. And this is like a negative 2. He owns that sign. So negative 2 times 4 thirds becomes negative 8 thirds. And negative 2 times z is negative 2z. Now, we can combine these. They're, they're like terms, and they have a common denominator. So I'm going to get negative 6 thirds y minus 2z. And I can simplify negative 6 over 3 as negative 2y minus 2z. All right, let's put together the things these guys can go together. I know that's very strange, but being they have a common denominator. Think of it like that, and that denominator is t. So I have 5 minus 3, and the denominator is the same. So if you had 5 over 7, suppose, and 3 over 7, if the denominators are the same, I could just subtract those numerators, right? Do you remember this? 5 minus 3 would get you 2 over 7. It doesn't change just because it's variable. So I have 5t minus 3t. Well, the denominators are the same, so that's a match. So I can still just go 2 over whatever that denominator was, just like I did over here. Now I can put the negative 2 and the plus 1 together. I get negative 1. Okay, here on C, I'm going to distribute here. And notice this makes 4pq. So he's went there, and then he's going to go here, and I get minus 4p. I'm going to do it again here. Okay, so now this and this are exactly the same name. They can go together, and it's like there's a negative 1 there. So I have 4 of them here, and negative 1 there. I've got 3pq minus 4p plus q. These aren't the same kind of thing. Now we're going to clean this up as well. I've got a distributive property. I've got to send that negative through. So I'm going to get 9s or 9r minus s minus 2r. So I sent that minus to both of these guys. Change their sign. Plus 6 minus s. Okay. So these are the same kind of thing. I can put them together. get 7r this is negative. I've got minus 1s over here, one, minus 1s over there. That's minus 2s's. And the 6 doesn't have anyone to go with. He's all done. Okay, we're going to simplify some formulas here. All they're asking us to do is tidy this up and combine any like terms. I've got one w here and one there. I've got a w there and another one over there. So do you see how we could make that two l's and two w's? And then they didn't really explicitly say this, but they pulled a GCF out of there to make it look like this. Okay, the same thing. This formula, they're asking us to simplify. It, um, They're not being super clear. The only thing I could do to simplify this is pull out that GCF. And this is what you would get. You could pull out a GCF of a P, and you'd get that equation there, which is a financial formula we'll explore later. Okay, some more foundational stuff, combining like terms, um, working with expressions, like subbing in. P please make sure all of this makes sense to you because, again, it's foundational stuff that could give you trouble later on if you're not comfortable with it.